Minimal residual disease has become a very important tool for the management of multiple myeloma patients. It has been introduced formally in 2016 in the response criteria for multiple myeloma. But if I would say in which patients minimal residual disease is really, really necessary, for sure, I will mention high-risk patients. In fact, those patients uh, are currently still treated uh, like all the other patients, and often they are achieving uh, a good response, complete response, uh, and even minimal residual disease negativity. But the problem for high-risk patients is the maintenance of this minimal residual disease negativity and the fact that the achievement of just one minimal residual disease negativity is not uh, a biomarker of prolonged progression-free survival and overall survival like in all the other patients. This is true uh, for sure for all high-risk patients, but in particular for those patients uh, so-called with very high risk, uh, that is to say carrying at least two cytogenetic abnormalities. So in the last uh, uh, one or two years, uh, in several congresses, uh, some results uh, of randomized clinical trials has been shown. For example, I may cite the MASTER trial, the multiple MAC myeloma trial of the UK group, what did all these trials show? Uh, that uh, high-risk patients have approximately the same chance to achieve minimal residual disease negativity as the other patient, but their problem is that they are losing this minimal residual disease negativity very soon. So uh, the important thing for those patients is to achieve a sustained MRD negativity. Currently, sustained MRD negativity is defined as a negativity which is sustained for at least one year. But for sure, probably in the future, we will be able uh, to refine this concept and maybe it will come out that more time is needed. Another important point is the death of this minimal residual disease negativity in high-risk patients for sure is necessary to achieve uh, the sensitivity of 10 to the minus 6, because 10 to the minus 5 is not representative really of the prolonged outcome of these patients. So it is really important that in those patients we are sure to achieve uh, the, the best that's of the response that we are currently able to intercept. Uh, those patients probably uh, are needing a consolidation therapy after autologous cell, cell transplantation. And for example, this is what the master trial demonstrated that in those patients, it is important to confirm and to in-depth the response applying what we have now in our hands, that is to say triplet or quadruplet based on the standard of care. So monoclonal antibody, anti-CD38, proteasome inhibitors, immune modulatory agents uh, associated with DEX. So this combination are usually able to in-depth the response, so to push most of the patient in what I said before, this sustained MRD negativity, and only in this situation, patients are able to experience a prolonged progression-free and overall survival. So I really think that from now on, all high-risk patients should be strictly monitored for minimal residual disease. As I said, with the higher sensitivity level, that is to say, at least 10 to the minus six, and they should receive after transplant a consolidation and maintenance. When they are achieving a sustained MRD negativity, let's say for at least one year, but probably even a slightly more time, we could think of tailoring the therapy, maybe downgrading the therapy. So for sure, this is the category of patients where minimal residual disease is of utmost importance. And I think that it is the, the unique chance for those patients to experience a prolonged survival is to achieve and sustain minimal residual disease negativity at the higher level. 
The last comment I would like to uh, mention is that minimal residual disease negativity should be looked inside the bone marrow, but also outside the bone marrow with imaging techniques, PET-CT or diffusion weighted MRI, because sometimes in particular in high risk patient is it possible to have a discrepancy between the bone marrow and outside the bone marrow. So it's really important to monitor uh, the disease in both these sites because it it is possible that the bone marrow is completely negative when there is some residual disease in the focal lesions outside the bone marrow. So a complete picture imaging plus bone marrow MRD negativity is the way really to improve the outcomes of high risk multiple myeloma patients.